All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Sarah Homework. I am Sarah, and today we are reviewing Fox and the Hound. And yes. it's really funny because I actually reviewed another Kurt Russell movie yesterday, so it's Kurt Russell week, apparently, which Great. is not a bad idea because it can be Kurt Russell week every week. <laughs> <laughs> um, today we have Aggie with me. Please in introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Aggie. I am a cosplayer, a Disney aficionado, a, I'm an actress, I'm a singer, I write. What else do I do? I'm a dog mom. I, I'm single. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> <laughs> just, just saying. <laughs> I want to own a house and then I need a partner to help with that. <laughs> And that's her Tinder bio. I love it. Oh my god. Well, um, Aggie and I, um, actually, Disney means a lot to us. We actually both met connecting through Disneyland, um, through our friend Megan. And um, Disney has always been a place of escapism, which I think Aggie would probably agree with me. Yes. And in this weird time right now, it's very, very awkward that we don't have Disneyland as that option. But I'm very glad they're taking the time to take their time to make sure that even though our state is still technically closed, um, taking the time to make sure they put, you know, thoughts, good thinking into making sure everything's safe before we get there. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, because it's kind of been super crazy seeing like how they're making it work in Florida. But I mean, I'm very glad they're taking the time. Yeah. Did you see that video? There's a video because you know how the characters are on horses. Mm -hmm. So in Disney World, someone like let their balloon go on accident and it got wrapped around the, the hoof of Merida's horse. And she's like a champ. She just like rides the bucking horse. Literally, it's like going up and down. And then she just like gracefully gets off of it. <laughs> and then the cast members take care of it. And I'm just like, this is crazy. Like, not only are people there in a pandemic, but like horses are going wild. It's just, everything's going crazy. <laughs> it's like the thing like apocalypses are made of. Disney apocalypse, there's like, Horses over here. People spray it, spray in small world seats with like pet, like pesticide looking sprayers. It's like, what's going on here? <laughs> oh my God. Like yeah. we're gonna see dragons. Like it, oh it's God. only a matter of time. But I am definitely excited that we Disney Plus is giving us all these ways to relive our childhood. And for some, because I didn't really grow up. This movie, which is the whole point of Sarah Homework, is crossing things off my list, and you know, um, I starting off, I thought I was gonna grade this movie a C. I didn't really have very high expectations for this movie because I don't really hear a lot of people talk about this movie. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like Rescuers Down Under. They're like hidden gems, but at the same time, like nobody really talks about them. Yeah, as much as, much as you know fan favorites and the Disney princess movies and all of that. Um, and it was something I was super excited that you brought up when you picked this movie because I feel like the themes of friendship and love are something that don't really get touched on anymore. Because mm -hmm. the whole like classic idea of like damsel in distress and like, you know, um, being uh, just being helpless and all of this and like a different kind of love is something that not really not a message we don't necessarily not need right now but I think that Frozen really kind of solidified with that you don't really need a prince to bring that love for you you right. can have friendship you can have your siblings fill that void of love for you necessarily because not everybody need, ain't nobody need a man necessarily to save them. <laughs> so it's Sometimes you need a man to buy a house with you because you are poor, but that's the point. Yeah. Exactly. And it's just, I, I think it's really important to go back to movies like this and realize that like, 
even though times have changed that people's wants and needs haven't and I'm that's why I'm really glad that we got to I got to watch this and we're reviewing this because it there's so many different lovable characters and um, personalities in this that really just show um it's just oh my gosh it just covers so much and there's so many themes and so many different things that I just like picked up from this movie right and there's like you know it is a, a, a film about friendship and and overcoming obstacles in your friendship but it's also a film there's a lot of underlying like um misogyny like tackling misogyny tackling racism essentially like it's really it's a deep film and yeah i don't know why it's not more of you know a popular classic because i think it's a really interesting film for that you know part of it as well yeah i agree because i'm really confused there's so as you and i both being dog moms like i know cats are cool and all but i feel like aristocats get so much more love than their dog movies i right? feel like 101 dalmatians gets more spotlight than this movie does mm -hmm. and the thing is i was realizing as i was refreshing my memory yesterday i was like this movie is why foxes are my favorite animal yeah <laughs> i used oh to watch this movie all the time when i was little so cute like, oh and they're they're amazing i love foxes yeah <laughs> oh my god like it is completely possible to have a pet fox. I completely get it. Like I know. <laughs> I get it. I looked like, into it. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. I, I looked into pot belly things when I was little. So. Um, definitely um, a lot of characters that, that's why it makes it hard for me to decide what my favorite character was. But for me, it was Big Mama the Owl. Because she was just, you just, she is such a fine thread that goes through the entire narrative and she's just there from beginning to end and she is there with him with the fox from beginning to end she match makes for her for him she is everywhere she talks to the um um the birds and she she's everywhere and so i mm -hmm. think she was almost just like a fairy godmother in a sense to where she's like there but not like didn't raise him kind of sense mm -hmm of um and just really that driving force um yeah. i i try and pick a favorite because that's hard like what is yours <laughs> um i think we all know it's todd <laughs> i just i i just really identify i think with you know, the treatment of Todd, like I had a rough childhood and, and I can understand the character's struggles in that regard. And, you know, it really resonated with me as a child and still does as an adult. Yeah, that is really good stuff. Cause like we were saying, like, we'll talk more about the themes and everything mm -hmm. after we answer our questions. Um, but yeah, those themes are what make the villain so much more menacing, which is yeah. why I think Abel Slade is my least favorite character. I think that might be for everyone, but he's my least favorite for sure, because I was going to say Chief, but at the same time, like, it's not Chief's fault. He got raised right. to be that way. Right. Um, I mean, the yeah. bear is a close second. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Yeah, but he's almost like the bear that's in, like, Verna, Verna's yeah, movie, it's so true. it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's true. I mean, is that your least favorite character, the bear? No, it's definitely the, uh, what's his name, the farmer, I forget. Yeah, Amos, Amos. Slade. Yeah. Yeah, definitely terrible, because the way he talks to women and the way he's just, and you see, you can tell there's, like, pieces of him, like, you can tell that he used to be a really nice guy. Like, mm -hmm. the, it, when he first gets the puppy, he's just really happy and giddy and super excited about his new killer dog. And so it's like, I don't know. That's why I, I kind of was wishing that the widow and him together at the end. I know it was very highly implied, but I feel like at the same time it's not. 
but I I wanted that to be its own happy ending in its sense. Because mm-hmm. um, cause she just talks about being alone, and he's clearly alone. And yeah. I thought that would have been almost too perfect. I think... I think it's similar in the sense that, like, okay, Todd got his girl, whatever. Cooper doesn't get a girl. <laughs> I think he does in the second one. I can't oh, remember. No. I haven't watched that one in a really long time. Um, but I think it goes along with, the th- I, I think it's a parallel theme, right? They're neighbors. They don't have to be romantically involved, but they've clearly become closer by the end of the film. And it, it seems like she's kind of setting him straight. You know, and just because someone, it, it, I think it's really interesting in the end where she's like smacking him for saying something misogynistic. And I think it's interesting because it shows that you can have these views, you can have these, you know, thoughts, but it's okay to change once you learn, you yeah, know, a lot of people like don't. a good Samaritan kind of thing where it's right. like, you don't have the same views, but you can still be nice to each other. Right. And you can encourage your friends to be better people. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. Um, And there's so many scenes like that that are just such a great snapshot of what this movie is about um, Mm -hmm. and what this movie and how heavy this movie is. But personally, my favorite scene is when he's, when Todd is trying to show off and show he doesn't know how to fish, basically. (laughs) And um, she's just like, you're the funniest thing I've ever seen. And they're just laughing and making fun of him. And he's like, guys, this is like my second day in the forest. Leave me alone. (laughs) 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 Yeah, it's literally, that's it's between that one and when they're playing hide and seek and the Best of Friends song comes on first. That's and my favorite. That's the, that's my that's my second one. Um, that's your favorite scene. The when they're playing hide and seek, yeah, because it's just so pure. It's yeah. so cute. Before humans came in and ruined everything. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, oh my god. One could say they colonized the relationship. Oh it really goes to show how much parenting really is such a big play into how people turn out and how it's so insane. This movie is heavy. Um, which really, because that scene, Best of Friends, is such a good song. It's actually not my favorite song. It... I didn't cry during this movie, I swear. I didn't. But <laughs> I started to, to to get a lump in the back of my throat, a little frog, um, when uh, Goodbye May Seem Like Forever, when it started to come on for the Air Bud is scene um, where she lets him go. And I was just like, oh no, so he's gonna be alone again? <laughs> like, oh my God. Why did she, that, that always made me so frustrated. Like, why did she take him back to the wild? He wouldn't have survived in the wild. He's already a domesticated fox. Like, yeah. What are you truly that alone? You don't have friends to give your pet box to? Your pet box that is clearly at least one years old. Like, he doesn't know how to fish clearly from the <laughs> like my biggest issue with the movie, okay? And it's like, I mean, uh, I get, go ahead. I get he had to like find his vixen or whatever, but like, come on. He wouldn't have survived in the wild. We oh all learned god. this in biology. <laughs> I wrote, oh my god, I wrote this down. Oh my god, I have to say it. If Todd can find a girlfriend on his second day in the forest, there's hope for you too, Aggie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is turning into a very different review than I imagined. I was really impressed with the fact that I was like, dang, they didn't waste any time. <laughs> well, it is Disney, you know, there has to be some love story. Yeah, but this movie's only like an hour and a half, dude. Not even hour 20. Oh my god. Though <laughs> so that last half hour felt like an extra movie. Like, because I, I paused it to go to the bathroom, and I was like, oh, there's still half an hour left, but, like, there's so much, or there's only half an hour left. I was like, there's so much that still has to happen. 
Like yeah. the bear scene hadn't even happened. And I was like, wait. <laughs> yeah, the, the pacing teeter totters a lot, but really there's so much that happens in it that drives mm-hmm. the plot. It doesn't, I wasn't really bored. Um, yeah. We, so we went over our questions. And we, we talked a little bit more about themes and everything, um, which really the ones that jumped out to me a lot were the themes of transformation transformation and growth which really actually shows a lot in with the birds and the worm too Mm -hmm. um because at the end i don't care about spoilers this movie's full um when the the worm turns into a caterpillar eventually i feel like that's still translated in their todd and um copper's relationship and how you know copper he had just like He's like, revenge, that's it. That's all for me. You, like, hurt, like, you hurt basically my mentor, Chief. Mm-hmm. And um, he was, yeah, like, he had justified revenge. He really did. And it really goes to show that he really did go dark side. But all it takes is a firm reminder of kindness to bring us back to realize that, you know, that's, you don't, change your destiny you mm-hmm. he may be a hound dog you're supposed to you know hunt foxes but that doesn't you still get to choose who you are as a person you may get raised yeah. in certain environments and that doesn't mean that defines you though your yeah. choice your choice is defined definitely i mean you you hit the nail on the head like i couldn't have said it any better i think you're absolutely right and you know looking back on it i think a lot of my, because I, my sister and I literally, we watch this all the time. You can ask my parents. They hate this movie at this point. <laughs> They're so over it. It was, uh, it was their Frozen? <laughs> uh, not quite. I think Beauty and the Beast was my Frozen. Okay. Or maybe my neighbor Totoro. But Fox and the Hound was definitely up there. We watched it a lot. And I, I mean, you know, you can't go wrong with cute animals, right? Well, we'll but have to I, review the live action I have thoughts on the live action Beauty and the Beast. I've been waiting. They're not positive. No. <laughs> but I should insane. have been Belle. I should have been Belle. It's fine. It's fine. Oh um, but I think that it had a big impact, you know, looking back on it, on helping me figure that part out about myself. Because, um, you know, like all the Disney princess films are like, you know, the man saves the woman. Beauty and the Beast was different. Mulan was different, of course. But like, essentially, it was like, you have to find the person that you love and your life's going to be amazing. And the fox and the hound was different. And I really liked that because it was just like, it was just talking about friendship. And it was talking like what you said about like, how you can change the outcomes with simple choices. And you know, showing your true self will help you and help the people who love you, even if they're mad at you, <laughs> you know, come around and see your side of things and vice versa. So I think that really helped develop that type of thinking in me, which I think was just amazing. It's great. I love it. <laughs> also, I'm a really big fan of how universal the message is of this movie and that I feel like it gives I think that's why it makes me so frustrated that people don't talk about this movie so much, is I feel like it's a good movie for little boys and little girls to sit and watch this movie and learn something from. Yeah, for sure. like, And I'm a big Spongebob fan. Um, I'm a big fan of Sunday, car- like, Saturday cartoons. But, like, where's the message? Like, and this message of teaching to kind of not, like, like, not turn the other cheek, but also just like kill them with kindness. Mm-hmm. And you know, well, you know, what if one of the kids at school is dealing with a friend that used to be their friend and is being mean to them? And you know, that is a situation that could totally happen in real life. Yeah. Like it is, and it teaching our kids to be the bigger person and realize that people are just that copper was just hurting. And um, it's really something that I don't think 
gets taught very often with kids anymore because it's we live in such a pop tart like you know generation of just people True. want things instantly and don't really have hope and faith in humanity anymore and i get it there's a lot of stuff going on in the world that makes the world seem very sour and i get it especially with who we have as our world leader and who we have like you know in control of things but at the same time like you know it's your house it's your life and you can make the world better if you choose to and a lot of people just decide to you know ignore people who are hurting or decide to be blatantly mean when it, it's the easier choice and it's right and it's not it's almost sad that being mean is the easier choice sometimes and i think that's what's really great about seeing todd and copper who come from different worlds and understanding that it teaches like yeah well that girl might not have the same color skin as you or that hey that girl may not like boys like you and it's like but we can still appreciate our differences and love each other just the same and at least try and understand each other Mm -hmm. you know and it, it just reflected the same too in the widow and the hunter like they're clearly different people have different morals and values but at the end it shows she still was kind to him and helped him with his mm -hmm. foot like they're both alone and they know hey like i say this statement all the time it's like you're you're stronger together and I right think people realize that sooner rather than later are going to come out better in the end. I agree. Yeah. And this is what we learned from a movie with the box and the dog in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a lot to unpack. It really, really is though. It, and it, but it's so emotional though. And I think going into grading this movie, it was really hard for me to give it an A minus because the only reason why I gave it the minus was for me, in order for a movie to have great rewatchability, is it has to be very not flat, but you can throw it on whenever. And I feel right. like this movie you have to be in a certain mood to watch. And I agree. I can't be eating my cereal and crying into my milk before 11 o'clock. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> it's not one of those movies. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's a movie that you have to watch with intention. And as an adult, right, like a kid's not going to go and be like, I, I want to learn about friendship today, so I'm going to watch. They're just going to be like, I want to watch these cute animals. And then like, but then you have to like have the discussion with them and, and talk about what the themes are and you know, just explore that with the child. But I think you're right because yesterday I was like, okay, it felt a little bit like a chore to rewatch it because I was like, oh, I haven't watched it in a while. Like I should just rewatch it. But I was like, oh, do I want to be sad today? <laughs> so I agree with that. I think it's, um, it's something that you have to really intentionally want to not only think about, but <laughs> plan your day around. <laughs> Because you're going to be sad. <laughs> and that's a really good note. Uh, well, you can give me your grade first. Sorry, what? Give me your grade. Oh, my grade. I mean, I think it's an A. <laughs> an A, for sure. Oh, but I'm so a little biased because I've loved it. Since <laughs> well, you literally picked this movie, so that's true. <laughs> um, no, actually, you bring up a really good point about the parent thing. Because one of my notes I wrote was um, mom deaths. Bambi versus Fox and the Hound, like, as a parent, like, and it, I mean, obviously, I'm sure it's gotten easier with, since Pixar movies have come out, but that sit-down talk you have with your kids about being like, yeah, so, yeah, it's gonna be sad, yeah, and like, you know, because, like, parents will screen these movies for their kids and yeah. watch their movies first, but at the same time, like, you don't know what's going on in their head, you don't know if they understand, you don't know if they understand what death, like, how heavy death is, and, yeah, um, oh my god, one of my, not saddest memories, but one of my profound memories was watching Inside Out, 
in theaters and oh my god sitting down and just hearing oh my god sorry i'm like reading this again ah, um the bing bong just died oh my god joy is just crying and crying and the little girl goes mom what happened where's bing bong and i was like oh sh- <laughs> I can talk about this from the point of I used to teach preschool. So you're right. Developmentally, children don't understand death. It's not in their, you know, they don't think about it. They don't know about it. They don't understand it. It's the job of the parent to then explain, you know, and and it doesn't have to be from scary point. Like everyone dies. It's just a fact. And it's not something that you have to worry about now. It's not something that you have to worry about for a very long time. But, you know, everyone dies and you just have to live your life to the fullest while you can. Like, it's a blessing to have a life. And I think if parents think about it that way, rather than being like scared of death themselves, because I feel like often people are afraid to talk about it with children because they themselves are afraid. You know, they don't understand death because maybe they've only experienced it as like, a grandparent has died or a parent has died a lot of people haven't at least at our age haven't had people die who are their age i have and that made me realize that like it's gonna happen to me and i can't stop it and i don't have to worry about it because i'm healthy and i'm young and i have a lot of life to live but i also do have to think about it in the sense that i can't just take for granted the days that I have. And I think if people are able to talk to their kids about it that way, then, you know, it's not such a scary thing. And I think children do have the capacity to understand. You just have to talk to them, you know? It's very true. And I think themes like dealing with death is really easy to tie in to have the end of the movie. Just Mm -hmm. like, you know, like, life is short, you need to be as kind as possible, and just realize sometimes that can be your last interaction with someone, whether it's your friend or a stranger, just be nice. Wash your yeah. hands and be nice, guys. <laughs> Don't pop in your teacher's mouths. Oh, God. Yeah. I can't tell you the amount of times that's happened. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the, the big thing about any Disney movie, any, any media, any book that children consume especially very young children it shouldn't just be a distraction so the parents can go get stuff done like you have to have intentional discussions with your children because they the reason we have all of these themes in in especially this film are to educate right and you can't educate someone if you don't discuss something with them and so i think that's also really important for a parent to realize is like you can let your child watch this, no problem. But until you have those conversations, it's just going to be like a cute movie with animals, which yeah. is what happened with me until I was older and I watched it again. And I was like, whoa, this is deep. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely, that's the thing I love about Disney and Pixar movies is these movies are written with purpose. Mm-hmm. And that's what I love about unpacking these movies is they're made with so much love and there's everything is made just to make you think and understand the world a little better. Like there's so many countless videos just about like Pixar themes and going into things about like how like, like even little things like literally like, I guess the Hawaiian translation for Lilo's name is like fix for something. So stitch and fix put together like what is that (laughs) like literally yeah she's fixing her sister's life so it's just like it's something like it's something like that but it's just definitely like i love just i think the close second that's why the disney movies are so hard to touch like Mm -hmm. the close second to me personally in the world of animation is the um the leica movies 
because nobody does stop motion like clay anymore. Yeah. But, um, Disney. Oh my gosh. Like Disney. Really, like you own me and Aggie's hearts. And um, please. Hundred percent. <laughs> giving us more. Um, and seriously, like, I am so glad you picked this movie for me to review with you because Yay. it's not something that wasn't definitely on my radar, but it wasn't something that was like, oh, I need to go watch Fox in the Hell. Like it's not, you know. But definitely glad I got to watch it. Um, thank you so Yay. much for joining me um, in doing this. Um, please tell everyone where they can find you. Go, go. Okay, I am at the only Aggie on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. I'm on ah! TikTok now. It's way more fun than I anticipated, and I'm way too old to be on it, but here I am. <laughs> um, and, oh, and I'm also on YouTube, but I cannot remember my handle right now, so I will send that to Sarah. <laughs> when I can. And I'm sure it'll pop up, like, right here. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm Sarah with Sarah Homework. Um, I try and do movie reviews in the middle of the week, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, subscribe to my Instagram, my YouTube, my Twitter, my Facebook. Follow Sarah Homework channel, Sarah Homework. Um, I have a TikTok too. I um, do artist spotlights on TikTok. Um, I post a potato fact and a question of the day every other day on my Instagram, and um, I have a lot of fun. So yeah. um, uh, thank you so much, and I am, I'm Sarah reminding you guys to stay weird. Bye! Bye!